How does one completely combat and reduce a hangover following alcohol consumption? In this video, what I'm gonna do is look at how we can specifically biohack a devastating hangover that can leave you feeling absolutely disgusting and feeling like crap the following day. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Ergogenic Health, and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So if you have been enjoying these videos, please subscribe down below and please like this video as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. So first of all, what I wanna do is actually have a look at alcohol's impact on our brain. So this is really interesting to help us understand how to specifically combat the deleterious effects of a hangover. So first of all, what we need to look at is how alcohol or ethanol consumption affects a variety of neurotransmitter systems in the brain. Specifically, what we're gonna look at is the effects on GABA, glutamate, dopamine, serotonin, and the endocannabinoid systems. Now, these stimulating effects occurring in the initial alcohol intoxication relate to changes in dopamine and brain-derived neurotrophic factor BDNF. Now the latter promoting activation of the TRKB receptor and the downstream signaling pathways. So that TRKB receptor is actually activated by a variety of other nootropics and could potentially explain the stimulating and perhaps even the thought enhancement and creativity that some people get following alcohol consumption. Now the balance between inhibitory GABAergic and excitatory glutamatergic neurotransmission will also be altered with reduced levels of GABA and GABA receptor insensitivity and increased glutamate levels and glutamate receptor suppression. Meta-analysis data from published data sets of various regions of the brain demonstrate the effect of acute ethanol or alcohol administration on glutamate and GABA levels, and that show that extracellular levels of glutamate were decreased in the nucleus accumbens, whilst extracellular levels of GABA and glutamate were elevated in other regions. So the toxicity of such increased glutamate release plays an important role during the initial stages of alcohol withdrawal after chronic alcoholization in the striatum. So what's really interesting here is how people assume that alcohol you know, has no effects on different neurotransmitter systems. In fact, we can see here that alcohol has a variety of different effects downstream from just acting as a GABA A agonist. And what's really interesting as well is that we can learn a lot about our personality type through alcohol. And for example, there are some people which I'll explore later in the, towards the end of this video. So make sure you keep watching where alcohol can basically how somebody feels the following day. So this is known as the alcohol afterglow. Some people feel really amazing the following day after alcohol. So I'll get to that shortly. So what actually happens during a hangover? Well, hangovers are basically frequent though unpleasant experiences that people, you know, unfortunately perceive and experience following intoxication. Now, multiple possible contributors to the hangover state have been investigated and researchers have produced evidence that alcohol directly promotes hangover symptoms through its effects on urine production, the gastrointestinal tract, blood sugar levels, sleep patterns, and biological rhythms. So number one, we can see here that ethanol directly affects urine production and also can basically stimulate dehydration. So this is one of the core mechanisms. Secondly, the byproducts or the breakdown of alcohol is acetaldehyde and acetaldehyde has toxic effects in the body. Body, and so we need to find a way to detoxify this. And then number three, we have congeners. So congeners are compounds other than ethanol in drinks. And so this can include methanol, which can basically break down into toxic formaldehyde and formic acid. And congeners can actually increase the hangover severity and intensity. So it may not just be the alcohol itself. It could be some of the other ingredients that are found within some of these alcoholic beverages. So must consider that aspect there. And then the immune system. So we know that the consumption of alcohol can cause changes in cytokine concentrations in the immune system. And studies have shown that the effects are caused by some cytokines that basically can intensify the hangover symptoms the next day. So it can affect interleukin 10, interleukin 12, and interferon alpha. So that's a critical point there. So how do we design a hangover stack? So this is my theoretical, if I were to experience hangovers, which I rarely do. In fact, I rarely drink alcohol personally because I just don't like the effects and I don't think 
that it's really that great altogether. So looking at the biohacking a hangover stack. So hopefully with this video, I'll break down these ingredients. You will be seeing them linked in the video description down below to purchase. The first ingredient we're looking at is N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester. So that's NASET, N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester. And we're looking at about a 100 milligram dosage. Now, interestingly, NASET is a more bioavailable form of N-acetylcysteine, and we can get away with using a much lower dosage due to its better ability to permeate cell membranes and tissues, and also massively increase glutathione levels in the body. Now, this is going to work synergistically with liposomal glutathione, and we're looking at between 50 to 100 milligrams of liposomal glutathione. Now, this has a direct antioxidant action. It reduces oxidation stress, it combats rebound inflammatory responses in the body, and it's not just working in the brain. So it has a body-wide antioxidant action or effect. And in addition, it also repairs any potential liver damage that may have occurred following the consumption of alcohol. So liposomal glutathione works synergistically with N-acetylcysteine ethyl ester, so NASET. The next compound in this biohacking a hangover stack is dihydromyrosetin or dihydromyrosetin. We're looking at a dosage of 250 milligrams. Now, DHM or dihydromyrosetin is a flavanol found in a number of plants that actually blocks alcohol from binding to the GABA A receptor. So this can have implications for some of the GABA A downregulation that occurs the following day after alcohol consumption. And so it can prevent further downregulation of this GABA A receptor, which plays a key role in the rebound anxiety that many users experience the day after drinking alcohol. THM also supports liver health. It neutralizes alcohol levels in the body and DHM also improves mitochondrial outcomes in the liver of alcohol-fed mice via the AMPK CERT-1 PGC-1-alpha signaling axis. The next compound or complex here is actually a B vitamin complex, and we're looking at one capsule. I personally like the Life Extension brand. So since alcohol can interfere with B vitamin status in the body, either by accelerating excretion or impairing absorption utilization, it's critical that we replenish with the these B vitamins following alcohol consumption. And then finally, we can add in two cups of coconut water. Coconut water is obviously packed with electrolytes. And so this is a very rapid way to get in sufficient amounts of electrolytes. So I just wanna also highlight this here is that I have been designing alcohol alternatives for my clients specifically to basically put together a stack that can replicate the effects of alcohol. So give you that, you know, better social verbal fluency, social anxiety reduction, just feeling less stuck in your own head, feeling more smooth, more in flow in conversation. This appears to be a highly demanded state that a lot of people are basically seeking, and particularly for parties and going to events. So if you want to check out the alcohol alternative stacks, I encourage you to check out the custom stack section on my website. Go over to ergogenic.com health forward slash product forward slash custom stack. Now, as I mentioned at the start, I did want to sort of outline the alcohol afterglow. So there is a very small percentage of people that actually feel incredible the day after they drink alcohol. And so this is what one Reddit user said, L-theanine and caffeine do not make me anywhere near as social as the afterglow of drinking the night before. With the alcohol afterglow, it's like I become an entirely different person who gets everything done, socializes well, rings off witty jokes nonstop, and does incredibly well at work and in meetings. When I'm totally sober or haven't drank anything in a while, I just don't feel like socializing whatsoever However, and I'm not witty or quick. I also don't enunciate words well, or maybe he's trying to say pronounce words well. He stutters, he has poor vocab and recall. He just sounds dumb. Speaking is labored and I'm just slow. However, if I have a couple of beers the night before, I speak eloquently with incredible eye contact. So this is really interesting to look at the potential for the alcohol afterglow to unlock this desired state, which really this whole premise here is based around cosmetic neurology, which I've spoken about before in my nootropics course. It looks at you know how we can design stacks to achieve this particular state. So here are some of the suspected mechanisms of the alcohol afterglow. Number one is the potential glutamate rebound. Number two is potentially they have baseline NMDA receptor hypo functioning. Number three is that they have baseline high levels of acetylcholine. And so by drinking alcohol, we're getting some sort of rebound 
alteration in acetylcholine levels and or potentially low baseline BH4, which is tetrahydrobiopterin levels. So that's pretty interesting there. So hopefully you learned something new. Be sure to check out all the links in the video description down below. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.